Okay, I had an alarm set, and I did not know that if your alarm goes off on your phone, it ends your video. So my video got ended again, but I am pushing forward. I am, uh, I am not going to be stopped this time. So this video will be split into two separate videos, but that's a lot better than being split into four videos. And it won't take me as long to upload these two as it did as it was going to the four separate videos. So we will be, we will be okay. So yeah, um, I didn't really want to touch on everything I wanted to. There's Mason's Illuminati stuff in this, how it's, there's some connections with all of this stuff. Highly recommend this book, Library 420, Cannabis, Magical Herbs and the Occult. There's so much good information in here. It's a quite a large volume. Um, so yeah, I was, I was about ready to wrap up this video anyway. Um, but yeah, I pretty much did this video because there was a comment um, from somebody before um, on my last video that said they wanted me to cover this. So here it is. I've pretty much given you three really good references. Um, and these books are going to be able to answer a lot more questions for you than I am. Um, but from personal experience, um, I think there's a reason that a lot of the mystery schools, you know, Freemasonry included and others, teach temperance. And they teach you to basically remain sober and vigilant. Um, anything that you put into your body or if you rely on anything, if your temple, you know, that you're, you're, you're working on your astral body and um, your aura and all these things through ceremonial magic, and there's a lot of things out there that which can subdue these effects. You know, they basically take away from your power. And any of these th substances, I don't care how, you know, even if it's just cannabis or something like that, because a lot of people tend to think that it's completely innocent. But if it's not used correctly, even that has um, can have very detri detrimental results, um, I think, for the magician. We see how powerful Crowley was. Um, I think that a lot of these substances, they do offer like a cheat code in life. Um, you're able to have like many years of experience in a short span of time, but I think it can really take away from some of the things maybe you're meant to experience in this life. That's not really my answer. I'm just saying that's a hypothesis. But I think there's a lot of power and a lot of, um, you can grow past a lot of things. I think things like, psilocybin these mushrooms or lsd they they have they do have therapeutic effects they can help you move past something they can help you move through something but the the danger that lies in them is you're not going to be able to avoid that confrontation or dealing with that emotion so if the person's not ready for it it can it can hurt them um so there is a danger to a lot of these things they need to be studied extensively um and yeah, it's, I'm just giving one viewpoint. So I think there's a lot of potential to a lot of these things. There's a lot of therapeutic value. There's things that can temporarily help you increase your magical powers, I'm sure, and come to a better understanding. So you're not dealing or holding with all this 10 step, you know, trauma or whatever. We see people that are healed, you know, through ayahuasca ceremonies or cancer patients who are getting relief from like cannabis. Um, and we, we know they have healthy benefits. They can when used properly. Um, but I think ultimately the strongest magician um, will not need these things. Um, as Damien Eccles says, if you were to be dropped off in the wilderness, um, you want to be able to be able to do, you know, your practices. You could out there in the wild, you could do the relaxation ritual. You could do the um, LBRP. And it's better, um, you know, taking care of our physical vessels as much as possible. Um, we want to be able to tap into the power and tap into, you know, what we call the light, the astral light, and all of these things um, naturally without having to rely on anything. Um, perhaps they could be a booster or something like that for certain circumstances or certain ceremonies. Um, we see this in all kinds of cultures, all kinds of different groups and stuff um, that exist out there. But for somebody to rely on it all the time, for somebody to delve into dangerous, dangerous aspects of these things, there is real danger. So I think caution should always be exercised, um, always. Um, um, and you should communicate with people who maybe have experiences with these things. That way you can learn about them and learn whether or not that is for you, whether you want to combine that with your magical practices, if you know, um, 
some of these things are so transformative, you are not going to be the same again once you have the certain epiphanies or whatever. But I think anything that can be accomplished with these tools of psychedelics or whatever can be, they can be, um, they can be tapped into naturally. You can gain these powers um, naturally. But I think, as I said before, a lot of these things are kind of like shortcuts. You know, like you could, it's hard in our culture with the, how busy our lives are. We go to work, you know, it's such a fast paced um, type of society that we rarely, we don't have the time set aside for us to go within. We would really have to make that time for ourselves and almost run away sometimes maybe from our responsibilities and stuff like that. And that's where um, mind enhancing natural substances like DMT, et cetera, could come in handy, you know, um, LSD or whatever it is, you know, mushrooms could give you um, some experience that you would not normally or understanding or consciousness that you would not normally ever be able to have in this life or this society because you would have been too caught up. Um, you would have never set aside the time to naturally do this, meditate. And that's why I think that's the best. I think that's the strongest. I think the strongest magician is sober and he's very happy with who he is and he doesn't have to, you know, the magician shouldn't have to use these things to cope with life. But sometimes life is very difficult and we are different minded people. Um, probably anyone who subscribed to this channel, you realize how different we are and how much it can sometimes alienate us from the rest of society. So, um, I really just want to take, you know, take what I say to heart and, um, you don't have to agree with it. You don't have to disagree with it, but I hope this is, has in some way, um, helped you, um, maybe, um, mostly just know what my perspectives on these things are. Um, yeah. And as, as I get older and stuff, you know, I'm, I'm more and more about being responsible and um, growing consciousness in a way that is sustainable. You know, we need to not only just have these epiphanies and have these grand experiences, but we also need to bring that back down to earth and manifest good here and make real change and um, not just create a bunch of... Um, I didn't really get too much into the aspects of um, how I kind of disagree with so much recreational use of these things. I did a little bit, but I didn't get into that much. I mentioned the last time I recorded this video on the video camera, I didn't get to say it this time, but I have seen it all, folks. Um, I've, been in, I've been in bands and stuff, um, and I can tell my story in one of these videos sometimes, sometime if you'd like. I'd like to share more music and stuff on here, kind of make it a cross-genre um, YouTube channel with music and occult information. Um, but being in rock bands, being in, in hippie jam bands, I've seen it all, folks. I've seen the craziest of the crazies. So I've seen what these things can do to kind of cause, you know, like kind of some chaos. If we look at the archetype of the tarot card, the fool, I think sometimes, you know, there is a time to play the fool. But we can't just have a bunch of fools running around everywhere. And we also can't just have everybody trying to be chiefs. Um, everybody wants to be a chief. And... I think ultimately the goal is to get everyone to be self-sovereign, totally sovereign individuals which can control their own destinies and they are not trying to control other people. We each become the kings and the queens of our own reality. Um, so yes, these things should always be used sacredly. Um, I have to go ahead and go. Um, I have to be somewhere in about 10 minutes. So um, I hope this gets my message through. Um, I hope... Um, these views are rational enough and don't sound too crazy. So I just wanted to give my input on this topic and we'll kind of be discussing it, you know, more as we cover, you know, Sefer Razael. We'll talk about that more. I'm, I'm sure we'll get into all of these books at some point. So peace and love everyone. I'm not sure when I'll be on here next, but I'll try to get on before Christmas. Um, if I don't have an awesome Merry Christmas and um, a Happy New Year if I don't see you before then, but I'm hoping I definitely will. Um, I, I know now that I need to use my phone to record these videos. I cannot use the, the video camera I got, unfortunately. So peace and love, everyone, and until next time.